Hello and welcome to the Reef Talk Extra channel. Now, here in the UK where I live in the south of England, temperatures this week hit a balmy 31 degrees. And yet the temperature on my tank uh, only peaked at 25.8 degrees when it's set to run at 25.2. And now in years gone past, it's got up to in excess of 28 degrees. But I've changed a few things in the last couple of years to make sure that doesn't happen and to keep the temperature nice and stable. So today I'm gonna to show you what I've done to achieve that. And if you want more videos like this, do make sure you like and subscribe to the Reef Talk Extra channel. Now the first thing to tell you is that this is only really a solution for those of us in uh, colder countries in like the UK where it only gets to sort of 28, 30 degrees a couple of days in the year. It's not a permanent all round solution, although there might be things that you can learn if you live in hotter countries. Now there are actually two stages to what I do and as we all know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So I'm going to start by telling you what I do to stop the temperature in the room getting so hot that it then starts to increase the temperature of the tank. And then I'll tell you the couple of steps I take to cool the tank down when the room does get hot. Stage one then is to close all windows and I'm going to have to aggravate Fred Titmus for this. Back in you come mate. Thanks very much. There we go. So you want to close every window in the room you're in. In my house, uh, in the living room that this tank is in, there are three windows that are uh, openable, so you want to close all of those to stop the hot air getting in. That might sound a little bit counterproductive because when you open windows you get a cool breeze coming through, but the air outside is usually warmer than the air in your house, so you want to start by shutting out any warm air. Stage two is to close your blinds or curtains. And this is part of the reason that it is not necessarily um, a permanent solution and something you want to do all year round. Sorry, Fred Titmus, you're gonna to have to <laughs> see. If, is he gonna move? He's gonna move, good lad. Okie dokie, so there you go. So you want to shut your curtains or blinds, and the reason you do that, of course, is to stop sunlight getting in. Direct sunlight makes your room much, much hotter, of course. So stage one, or stage two, should I say, is shutting out the sunlight. So that's prevention taken care of, now let's look at cure. Step one is to ventilate your cabinet in the sump. Now, to be fair, most sumps will have a lot better ventilation than this tank. This is a peninsula tank, so there's no open back panel, but most of you will have a big open space there. I don't, and the only open space I have is up there. It's a tiny little gap. But what I've done is I've put a little fan on there. It's just a little cooling fan that I got off uh, Amazon, a little PC fan, and that makes an absolutely huge difference. Now, before I got that cooling fan, I couldn't keep the tank temperature down below 26 degrees, even in the winter. So installing that pushes out all the humid air that builds up above the sump and cools down the tank. Now, if you have a big wide open gap at the back of your cabinet, that might not be necessary, but it certainly won't hurt. And whether or not you have good cabinet ventilation, the second step is to open your cabinet doors. Again, this does exactly the same thing as the fan, only on a bigger scale. It lets all of the humid warm air out, which stops the tank from overheating. Uh, and again, this is part of why this isn't a permanent solution, because it doesn't look particularly elegant, does it, having the, uh, the cabinet doors open, and it does get in the way. But for these cool days, maybe three or four times a year, it is well worth the inconvenience. And that brings us on to the final stage, which is cooling fans. Now over the years, I've used various hobby grade cooling fans, and given how small they are, they're actually surprisingly effective, but when it comes to the really hot days, they don't quite cut the mustard. So in the last couple of years, I have switched to tower fans. It's just a home tower fan. I got this from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below, but you can also get this one. It's a Russell Hobbs one from Argos and Homebase and probably all over the world. Last year, I used a two foot long tower fan, which was huge, it was far too big. This is only 13 inches, so it's not too obtrusive. And in fact, I'll show you what it looks like from my seating position. You can see that you can just about see the corner of the fan, but you can't really see it, so it doesn't look too messy unless you're standing by the tank. And because this is a lot more powerful, of course it kicks out a lot more flow, but also the window that the, the flow comes out of, the airflow comes out of, is a rectangle and that produces the perfect kind of flow right across the top of your tank which is exactly what you want for evaporative cooling. Now I have that connected to a heating controller, a refractory thermo control, so when the tank temperature gets to 25.4 it automatically turns the fan on. But you don't need a heating controller, they are really good, but you don't need one, you can just turn it on and leave it to, to run all day and turn it on and off manually yourself or just put it on a plug timer from say midday to 8pm 
uh, and then it will be on during the hottest hours. And actually at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, that kind of time, when the temperature outside starts to cool down, that's when I open the windows back again to let a bit of a, a cool air back in. So that is a summary of what I do to control tank temperature in the summer here in the UK. Now this isn't necessarily a perfect how-to guide, it's just showing you the way that works for me, and there are obvious downsides that you will have already spotted uh, as we've gone along. It does make the living room look a little bit bleak, which kind of defeats the object of the, uh, of the summer when you want as much sun as possible. Uh, and also the final thing I haven't told you is that perhaps unsurprisingly that fan is a little bit noisy. Here's what it sounds like. So yeah, not exactly quiet, and you can bet your bottom dollar that if this was a reefing piece of equipment, I would be complaining something chronic. But I think it only cost me about 20 or 30 pounds, uh, and the noise isn't actually too bad. It just means I need to turn my TV up a couple of notches in the evening when I'm watching TV. And while it is noisier than I would like, it isn't unbearable, especially if it's only on for a few days in the summer, and I can't even hear it upstairs when I'm asleep in bed. If you've got any questions then let me know in the comment section below and feel free to share your tips on how you keep your tank cool during the summer with the rest of the community. And if you enjoyed this more informal vlog style video make sure you subscribe to Reef Talk Extra for more of this and until next time happy reefing.